Well, let's see what happens when we put our heads together and make some music. It, it wasn't a, a business uh, you know, decision or, or any sort of ulterior motive. We did it for the love of metal. It started actually April 2011. And uh, the first uh, incarnation of this was under a different name. And it happened a few days before the Big Four show in Indio, California. And it was Mike, uh, Charlie Benanti, Frank Bello, and Dave Ellison. That was uh, the first time those four got together and really played, did like a clinic, educational style uh, show, if you will. It was kind of a mishmash of a It was held in a music store. And then a few months later, the Big Four show came around to Yankee Stadium here in New York City. And I wanted to build off that. The crowd for that first one was, it was amazing. And then we added Kerry King and Philip and Samuel and Scott Ian. So it went from four people to seven people. And from there, it went from seven people to about 15 people. Uh, one, what started at two drummers, went to three drummers. Um, it just kept growing and growing. And then uh, a little over a year ago, I kind of took a, a break and transitioned what I was doing in my life on a personal level. And uh, Dave Ellison called me up and said, dude, you know, Megadeth is not playing uh, Motorhead's motorboat cruise, so how do we, are, are we ready to do something? Can we, you know, get Metal Allegiance off the ground? And at that time, I literally just named Metal Allegiance, I just came up with that, that the new idea, and we were supposed to kick off in January of 2015, so now we're three months premature. And then we realized Mike's going on a boat as a fan, you know, Downs playing, Anthrax is on the ship, Testament's there, all the pieces were there, so within 48 hours we got it together, and I guess as the saying goes, the rest is history, and here we are, uh, you know, 12 months later with a record, which, you know, came out of left field for us. I mean, it should probably be noted, all these years of these gigs that we were doing these, we were playing covers. I mean, it was always, you know, all of us, you know, me and the guys from Antrax and Slayer and Megadeth and Testament, all coming together to just jam and have fun, pay tribute to our heroes that we grew up with and doing covers. And then when we were on the motorboat, we were like, man, it would be great to do an album, you know, um, but, you know, what, what, what are we going to record covers or what do you want to do? And we were like, no, why don't we actually, you know, write our own album? And uh, so at that point, we, we, you know, we slimmed it down from 15 people to the, the what we call the core four which is me and Mark and Alex Skolnick and David Ellison. And the four of us wrote this album. And, uh, and then we got all of the dozens of special guests sprinkled on top, different singers and different guitar players. And it's all about this, this brotherhood of metal. You know, it's really, we're all just a bunch of, a bunch <laughs> of metal fans just having fun playing together. I did the math earlier, and the two, we had two different writing sessions. The first one was the first week of December of 2014. The second one was the first week of January of 2015. In a combined seven total days, we wrote and flushed out nine songs, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. In today's standards, it takes a long time for bands to, to do things these days. So we wrote nine songs, added a cover, and then had you know, 25 people on it under 12 months it's pretty you know. well the music was very it was very strong and the music dictated the singer or the guest guitar player we didn't go okay we're going to write this song this particular style for Chuck Billy or we're going to write this song for Philip and Selma that was never the intention we just started writing we wrote music it would, we'd be in the middle of writing a song and Mike would go man freaking Randy from Lamb of God would kill on this track. We got, and we flush that and then we start hearing things. You start hearing things as you're writing. And those are the, the vocalists we went for. So the music really dictated who we got to sing on it. Philip and Selma was the only singer that we gave an empty canvas of music to. We delivered a, a musical song. Uh, we, we didn't give him lyrics. We didn't give him guidelines, melodies, anything. We just said, dude, do your thing. Um, Nobody tells Phil what to sing. with all the years that we've done this uh, it's always an event you know uh, you know the cast of characters that are up on stage is an event the set, the song selection the set list and the songs that we play that's always very unique each each time around I mean doing a, a, a real tour 
with this band is, is probably impossible just because there's too many different schedules involved. So it's kind of cool that we kind of leave it as, you know, something where we'll do a, a special show in New York or a special show in L.A. or maybe do a, you know, the motorboat or do a festival in Europe. You know, keep it kind of like uh, something that is an event and, and unique and people want to experience something that, you know, that they know is unique. Thank you.